Hi, this is Dr. Krauss, and I am basically cheating. Um, somehow, the Labor Day holiday losing a lecture has really messed me up as far as getting you everything you need for the lab that's due this Friday while also preparing you for the lab that we're going to start this Friday. So I'm kind of just trying to sneak in a little bit of extra lecture material. Um, I think I talked with most groups about the where function, but I might not have explained it super well, and I don't know if, they, if I did really get to all groups. So I just want to kind of demystify that as something that you're going to need for this week's lab. So this is the simulated data, the lab that's due this week. So this is the simulated data file that uh, is part of your comprehension questions or whatever. And if you're looking at this, we've got time in the zero with column, then we've got an input that switches on at 0 0.1 seconds in the, the next column over, and then in the last column we have the output. Um, so I have a file started that's going to load this data. It's just loading a file called simulated step response.txt and it assumes that that file is in the same folder where this Python file is. And then I simply unpack the three columns of that to different variables, and I plot it. And for some reason, I'm missing my show command. And when I come over here, and I do that, I get this plot. And so the blue is my delayed step response, and the green is the output of the system. And I really like when I'm doing step response tests to see the actual step flip on. I like to see that it started at zero and then a little bit later it flips on. And so that's actually a delayed step response. And if you look at uh, the Fourier transfer table, you'll see that the delay has its own Laplace transform form. But then when you inverse Laplace it, you basically multiply by a step response that is something like one of t minus t zero which basically zeroes out everything before t0. So we just want to talk about how to do that. Um, so the main thing I want to talk about as far as the where function goes is how to find basically this point in the data where the step switch is on. So what we could do, if you remember, our step input is just called u. And so I can ask, there's a function called where, and I could just say where is that greater than 0.1? Um, now, for reasons I don't fully understand, the output of where is always one array per column, I guess, or per dimension of u. And so it's wrapped in a list, and, and we're going to just grab the zeroth element, the first element of that list. And so now I have just an array. But the index that I'm looking for is really this first one um, here. So ultimately, I could say... And I went over with this with most groups, that the index where the switch or the step turns on is where u of 0, or u is greater than 0 0.1, and I grab the 0, 0 element of that. And so that will just turn out to be that, and if I look at t of that index, I get 0 0.1 seconds, which makes sense. So I, I just don't want to hard code this number to be 10 or hard code the switch index to be 0 0.1. So this is how I go out and find it. But in part of trying to kind of explain all of that, I want to talk about the where function itself. So I'm going to explain this to you. Um, so I'm going to say index array 1 is equal to where <coughs> u is greater than 0 0.1. And I grab the index there. So that should be this array here that starts at 10 and goes to 99. Now I could also, if I was trying to explain this in a more MATLAB friendly way or a way that for people who don't fully like or understand Python, I could do something more like this. I could first of all say what is the len of t and then I could create a different array. I'm going to start, uh, start off as just an empty list. And then I'm going to say for i in the range of n. So basically that's going to iterate from 0 to um, n minus 1, where n is the length of the u vector. And I'm going to say if u of i is greater than 0 0.1, 
Then I'm going to take my array and I'm going to append i. So I'm just making a list of all of the indices where this is true. And then I want to run this code. And what I want you to see is that ind array 1 is exactly the same as ind array 2. Um, they don't print out as nicely because um, it's an array and not an, it's a list and not an array. So I could make an array of that just so that it would print nicely. So there's that and there's that. And they are exactly the same. So what do I want you to see is that this one line of code accomplishes the same as this five or six lines of code. And all that the where is doing is it's basically a vectorized if statement. So it's taking this if and it's grabbing all of the indices where this condition is true but doing it in one line of code. Now one line of code means there's less work for me to do, less opportunities for me to make mistakes, but more importantly maybe just as important, I don't know, I guess maybe not. It's also just a lot, lot faster. So if I said, tell me, I'm going to try to just say, how long did it take to do that versus how long did it take to do this other thing? And so if I said dt1 was equal to t2 minus t1 and dt2 is equal to t3 minus t2 and then run this thing and say what's dt2 divided by dt1 it's roughly 20 times faster to do the where function than to do my own for statement for loop with an if statement inside of it um, where I have more chances to make mistakes anyways so the where function is your friend when you're trying to test for a condition like this but you want to test over an array um, and then the second thing I want you to see okay now that I have that information if I wanted to implement that in some kind of model. Um, what if I was just trying to do a relatively simple model like so. It's, it's going to be a bad model. It's not going to fit the data well. But what I want you to see is for this form that it has right now, it should be equal to 5 when t is equal to 0, which is maybe not exactly what I want. So I'm going to just say y sub m is equal to my model of 10.0 and then I want to plot t comma y sub m. Uh, what did I just do here? Oh. So I forgot to return. By default, if I don't tell a function what to return, it returns none, which is not a vector, and so I can't plot it like that. Okay, so the red line is what I'm looking for, and it starts at 5 at t is equal to 0. But I want to come in here and define that t0 is equal to switch ind, oh, sorry, is equal to t of switch ID. I'm going to pay no attention to the fact that T0, T1, T2, T3 all look like they go together. They really are, T0 is disconnected from the others. Um, so if I wanted to take my model and subtract off a T0, what we should now find is that, um, let me zoom in here, uh, let me back out just a little bit. At t is equal to 0 0.01, this thing is equal to 5, which is exactly what we would expect because t minus t0 at that point is 0, e to the 0 is 1, 1 times 5 is 5. The problem is that it doesn't go to 0 before that point, which is what we want to do by multiplying by a delayed step. Um, so the way to do that that's easiest in... Um, Python code is to simply say everything from zero up to switch ind I'm setting back to zero after we've done this initial calculation. And now you'll see it starts at zero, hops up to five, and comes back down. So the main things I want you to get are how to use the where function 
to find the first index where some set condition is satisfied, and then use that to find your T0, and then incorporate that into your model by subtracting off a of T0 here, but then also by zeroing everything out before the switch index. Um, I'll post this to YouTube, and uh, I'll also make the Python code here available. See you tomorrow.